Rice is certainly a dietary staple for many peoples and cultures around the world, but is it safe? What triggered me to look into this was I had this brown rice cereal for breakfast a few days in a row and I could not sleep, had this tension in my head, which was similar to the symptoms I experienced in the past from liver damage while I was on the carnivore diet. So I'm assuming that's arsenic and after all the research, it's gotta be. Arsenic is a highly toxic metal with the atomic number 33. There is organic and inorganic arsenic. The type in our food supply is predominantly the inorganic pollutant. It is a byproduct of metal smelting and has poisoned our food and water supply through its use in pesticides and fertilizers. And Although they say that food sources and water sources have some type of natural arsenic in them, I'm not convinced that it's truly natural. Rice, unfortunately, has a 10 times higher uptake for arsenic than other grains, making frequent consumption of rice a guarantee for toxic levels of arsenic in the body. What's even worse is the high ingestion of rice products by children, especially rice cereals, rice milks, and children's snacks sweetened with brown rice syrup. And once you figure this out and see how toxic rice can be and start looking at the ingredients in children's foods, you get a little skeptical if it was intentional or not because these people are smart and rich and they own all this stuff. It's scary how they poison people. So we have the heading of the study and then my synopsis of what to take away from that study. Arsenic and rice, translating research to address healthcare providers' needs. One food known to be particularly high in arsenic is rice, a staple for much of the world's population. Rice grown throughout the world contains arsenic, particularly U.S. grown rice. And, and although that study says that, that's not necessarily true. Uh, all rice throughout the whole world has a decent amount of arsenic. Though the amount and forms of arsenic found in different rice cultivars vary, the average levels of inorganic arsenic detected in rice are high enough to raise questions about potential health impacts, including for children. Though there is a variable amount of arsenic in the products sampled, nearly one-third contained high levels of inorganic arsenic, which at a consumption rate of two and a half servings a day could pose an estimated lifetime excess cancer risk at or above one case in 300 people. So a lot of these metrics they use are you know, like not really relevant, but uh, we'd be more concerned about how much arsenic is in the blood and liver and that stuff. You guys notice how my voice changes when I read the study versus when I say my own thoughts, right? I think that's pretty clear. Within any one type of rice, brown rice contains more arsenic than white rice because arsenic accumulates in the bran, which is the hard outer layer of the grain seen in brown rice. Removal of this layer produces white rice, thereby eliminating a portion of the arsenic. The European Food Safety Authority has reported that dietary exposure to inorganic arsenic for children under three years old is about three times higher than that of adults based on kilogram body weight, due in part to the types of foods infants and young children consume. Elevated levels of inorganic arsenic have been found in foods commonly eaten by infants and toddlers, including rice cereals, a common first food, pureed foods, and products sweetened with brown rice syrup. So on that study, there's actually a chart showing rice consumption by ethnicity. It goes like Asian, Mexican, a few others, and then white. Asians obviously having the highest rice consumption, whites having the lowest. Interestingly though, Asians consume more than twice as much rice as white people, but their urinary arsenic levels were only 20% higher, so there's definitely some factors at play. So that was the first study, it gives us a few important facts and insights to what we will be speaking about. The second one is assessment of human dietary exposure to arsenic through rice, which states, rice accumulates tenfold higher inorganic arsenic an established human carcinogen than other grains. And in this second study, they analyzed 20 other studies which consistently showed that all rice basically contains arsenic and it increases urinary arsenic excretion. 
One experiment followed two participants who, while consuming low arsenic water, were exposed to a wheat-based diet for five days and then switched to a rice-based diet, about one pound per day of each, for another five days. The two study participants' urinary arsenic concentrations doubled upon switching from the wheat-based to the rice-based diet. The authors estimated that 40% of arsenic ingested by consuming rice was excreted in the urine. So where's the rest of the arsenic going? Is it being excreted in the bowels? Is it being stored in the tissue? Because later on, you'll see that arsenic is pretty bioavailable from the rice. Then we have rice intake and emerging concerns on arsenic and rice, a review of the human evidence and methodological challenges. Rice cultivars have three to 37 fold variation in their ability to accumulate arsenic and the proportion of inorganic arsenic in the grain also differs according to variety. As a consequence, arsenic concentrations within commercial rice samples vary widely, influenced by the cultivar and region of growth. Rice grown in the US and in Europe had higher total arsenic concentrations than those varieties from India, Egypt, Bangladesh, and Asia. US grown rice contained higher levels of total arsenic and a lower proportion of inorganic arsenic than rice from either India or Bangladesh. So that third study leads us to this fourth study, a little similar, variation in grain arsenic assessed in a diverse panel of rice grown in multiple sites. Six field trials were conducted, one each in Bangladesh and China, two in Arkansas, and two in Texas, on a large number of common rice cultivars representing genetic diversity among international rice cultivars. Within each field, there was a three to 34 fold range in grain arsenic concentration, which varied between rice subpopulations. So if you look at the chart on that study, on average, the arsenic is ranging from 400 micrograms per kilogram to 600 micrograms per kilogram. However, there was an interesting outlier in Arkansas because one batch had only 30 micrograms per kilogram and then there was another one in Arkansas, same location, that had 1,000 micrograms per kilogram. So there's definitely something fishy going on with the fertilizers and the water supply and the pollution. Now, so far, we can grasp that rice has dangerous levels of arsenic and it is consistently polluted. So is there some way we can alleviate that? Is it safe to consume rice under certain circumstances? Effects of polishing, cooking, and storing on total arsenic and arsenic species concentration in rice cultivated in Japan. Total and inorganic arsenic levels in three white rice samples polished by removing 10% of bran by weight were reduced to 61 to 66% and 51 to 70% of those in brown rice. The arsenic levels in the white rice after three washings with deionized water were reduced to 81 to 84% and 71 to 83% of those in raw rice. Just to simplify that a little bit, when they turn the brown rice into white rice, they remove about 40% of the arsenic. And then when they rinse it, they remove another 20%. Now, rinsing brown rice doesn't really make a difference, but after you find that out, you probably don't wanna be eating brown rice. And cooking does not affect arsenic levels unless you do it in a certain way. Next up is arsenic bioaccessibility in cooked rice is affected by arsenic in cooking water. The estimation of the arsenic intake through cooked rice based on the arsenic bioaccessibility highlights that a few grams of cooked rice, less than 25 grams of dry weight per day, which is like a tablespoon of rice, cooked with highly arsenic contaminated water is equivalent to the amount of arsenic from two liters of water containing the maximum permissible limit. So I don't know why they were doing the study, but it says that if rice is cooked in arsenic contaminated water and you just have a handful of that rice it's like drinking a gallon of arsenic polluted water which um, it's kind of crazy uh, so definitely something to be said about using a clean water source to cook the rice and finally we have improved rice cooking approach to maximize arsenic removal while preserving nutrients 
and basically you have to boil the rice. Like, I, I know that sounds like how you normally cook rice, but you need a much larger volume of water. Like, imagine you're boiling some potatoes in water. Same thing with the rice. You need like five to ten times the amount of water that you normally use for rice. You boil the rice for like five minutes. You take it out of the water. You get rid of the water. Use fresh, clean water, and then you cook the rice as normal. But <laughs> even with polishing and rinsing the rice for five minutes until the water runs clear. You know, that only removes 50% of the arsenic. And then cooking it in this method only removes another 20%. So you still have a pretty significant amount of arsenic even in the most properly prepared rice products. But, you know, compared to eating just regular brown rice off the shelf versus doing that, you know, I mean, you're, you're reducing your arsenic intake substantially by like 75, 80%. So that is really, really important if you're going to continue to eat rice. And I think a lot of the traditional rice preparation methods, especially in Japan, where they only eat white rice that has been rinsed thoroughly, it seems like they know about arsenic. So uh, based on those methods. Yeah, I mean, a lot of health nuts or bodybuilders eating a lot of rice, certain cultures, you know, stop eating rice for a little bit. Try it out. See how you feel. That's my suggestion. And... I did that based on my gut instinct and how I reacted to eating rice. You know, I usually have oats for breakfast, I have bread for lunch, and then I have wheat noodles for dinner. So, you know, there's a lot of downsides to all different types of grains, but arsenic and rice seems to be one of the biggest concerns. So hopefully this helps you guys learn a little bit. You know, I don't invest a crazy amount of time in this research. You know, we're not going into specific numeric comparisons. We're not looking into body toxicity levels. But it's pretty safe to say if the allowed limits by the government are being exceeded pretty easily that we definitely shouldn't be having it. So thank you guys for joining me. If you can go to frank you will see all of my businesses where we will probably not be selling rice products. Uh, but if you could also please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe and check that notification bell. And I will see you guys soon. Make sure if any of those uh, copycat degenerates talk about this, that you link them to my YouTube channel and tell them where they got the genius idea to talk about arsenic and rice before I throw some people into a meat grinder.